Yes. Hello. Howdy. Today, we're here to, uh, for the Masterclass Assembly Line. Uh, of course, want to start us off with a quick icebreaker. Uh, today's question is going to be, is there something on your bucket list that you're looking forward to crossing off soon? Max, uh, you want to start us off? Yeah, I've never been to Disneyland, which is kind of wild wow. to consider since I live in California. And what? Yeah, my mom brought my sister to Disneyland like probably five times when she was a kid, and then I never got to go. So definitely <laughs> got the, the short end of the stick there. <laughs> you, you've been to Southern California though, right? Yeah. Okay. I've been right. in proximity to Disneyland. <laughs> I've just never actually been in there, which is kind of striking crazy. distance. It's always yeah. had other things. Always had other <laughs> things to work on. Um, bucket list, bucket list. I think at this at this point, it's like mainly bucket list stuff orientated around my uh, my kid. But uh, I think Disneyland's a good, bu good bucket list thing for the the five year old, and then also uh, probably Legoland. You know, need to, need to get those going for sure. <laughs> nice. I think uh, for me, this is something I put on my bucket list when I was like 15 years old, and was like I'm invincible, and oh, I've gone postponing it. It's bungee jumping. I've gone skydiving, but bungee <laughs> jumping is like I have a fear of heights, and it's just something I want to want to be able to do. You know, jumping off a tall tall precipice. Why not? You gotta live your life. I don't know, man. You're making me nervous, bud. I'm making myself nervous, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, looks like we got some more folks in the ch in the audience here, so I'm going to start us off now. We're here today. For Let's the go today for the masterclass assembly line: how to build a rep ramping machine for rev ops and sales leadership. Uh, today's event is brought to you by the team here at Modern Sales Pros. For those of you not familiar, Modern Sales Pros is the world's largest and highest quality community for the sales management, sales leadership, sales and revenue operations, and sales enablement, aka our Modern Sales Pros. Our mission is to create an environment for our members to answer questions they struggle to solve on their own and help them see around corners that they may not know about. We do that through live sessions like this, an online forum, and our quarterly summits. If you're not already a part of MSP, you're going to be invited to join after this event. To go over some quick housekeeping notes before we get into the content, first of all, this event is being recorded. You're going to be able to access this recording and key takeaways on the previous events page of our MSP website. Second, if there's any questions for our panelists, please do use the Q&A function, and we're going to do our best to get to them during the event. Okay, Pete, I'm going to hand things off over to you, talk about Atrium, and do the intros. Let's do it. All right, let me stop sharing, and I will share my own screen. This is where I always share the wrong screen. Will I get it right, or will I get it wrong? I got it right. Hey. It. All right. Even the... Blind monkey finds an occasional coconut, as my father would say. Um, so awesome. Hey, everyone. A um, little bit about Atrium here. Um, so uh, for folks that don't know, Atrium makes what we call data-driven sales management software. So essentially, it's software that helps uh, sales organizations embed a culture of data-driven sales management. Uh, and so the way that Atrium does that is by... Um, helping AE and SDR managers use data to improve team performance by continuously monitoring dozens and dozens of AE and SDR KPIs and then proactively alerting managers and operations and leadership when something is off of their reps and their teams and so on. And so what this means is that managers can get to uh, coaching insights faster and um, and change behavior, change rep behavior and win. So that's a little uh, little bit about Atrium there. And one of the coolest things about uh, Atrium is it takes about a couple minutes to set up a free Atrium account with a read-only connection to your Salesforce account. So that's a little bit on uh, Atrium, but I'm excited to talk about um, ramping process and how to systematize a successful um, you know, ramping mechanism for uh, across your organization. So first, a um, couple of introductions here. Uh, my name is Pete Kazanji. I'm one of the founders of Atrium. Um, and uh, so prior to Atrium, I started a recruiting software company in 2011, I guess I want to say, uh, that was acquired by Monster Worldwide in 2014. Um, and that's really where I went from being kind of like a business generalist founder to our first sales rep, sales manager, sales leader. And so um, kind of in that process, um, that's really where I got like hipped to uh, modern sales, like operationally excellent, analytically excellent uh, sales process. So that's a little bit on me. Um, also, subsequent to that, started um, the uh, Modern Sales Pros community, and then also wrote a book on 
uh, sales call, startup sales called Founding Sales. So with me today is the illustrious Max Klang. Uh, Max, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to folks and let them know kind of what you spend your time on here at Atrium and, and kind of like what you, uh, what you worked on prior to, to that? Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm Max. I'm a senior AE over here at Atrium. I've been a seller at a couple of organizations. The first one was Bright Edge, then I was at Asana, and then I ended up working with Pete over here at Atrium. So, yeah, I spend most of my, most of my time here just like working with, you know, lead sales leaders, sales operations folks, talking about sales reporting, how to kind of align their organizations and be like data driven and all that kind of good stuff. So excited to talk about ramping today. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, cool. <clears throat> so what we're going to talk about today is really like how to systematize a successful um, like ramping process for an organization. Right? We're kind of going to be looking at this from, through the lens of like what a sales operation, revenue operations leader or sales leader might be ought to be thinking about across all their cohorts of um of, of new AE hires. A lot of this stuff will be applicable to sales managers and SDR managers as well. But really what I want us to do today is to talk, like think about this from the standpoint of how we systematize this um, across like multiple, um, you know, multiple ramping cohorts. Um, cool. So, um, so yeah, so what we're going to talk about today is like, you know, the right way of, of ramping as compared to the, the wrong way of, of ramping. Uh, and so good ramping really is like focus on, you know, helping reps get there, you know, uh, instrumenting the leading indicators of reps and making sure that they're uh, kind of pacing towards their relevant goals, um, making sure that, um, you know, that, that the organization is like validating those checkpoints as they go in a in a metrical fa fashion such that people can intervene as uh as need such that managers and leadership can intervene if things are if things are kind of like tracking the wrong way and we're going to talk about that a little bit here so really the biggest challenge as to why ramping is so hard or at least like measuring the successful ramps of of reps is so difficult is um because of this this thing that we call the the new rep ramp productivity offset and um it's, you know kind of a mouthful but like so <laughs> so so what the heck is that and really what it comes down to is um and it's it's kind of like related to you know all sales math is that oftentimes like people really struggle for to measure and comprehend um like time offset processes and um and like just humans struggle with this in general <laughs> right and uh and so ramp is a particularly hard time for this where you have this like substantial offset be between when somebody s joins the organization and when they start when you start seeing kind of the fruits of their labor right um and and so the the challenge there is um you know, if you're not paying attention to kind of like leading indicators there, um, you're you're kind of flying blind. And so let me just kind of take you through the like what kind of precipitates this. Um, so if you think about like what a, a prototypical rep ramp might look like, you know, you get onboarded, you know, first day, you know, orientation, et cetera, et cetera. And then maybe if there's like training, probably for like, you know, some organizations might be a week, some organizations might be a month, et cetera. But like, there's some time period where in that, the, the reps in question, like maybe those five new reps or 10 new reps or, or what have you, um, you know, are, are kind of like in classroom mode. So then you get to this point where now you're actually doing some pipe building, right? And so kind of contingent on how, like what the deal cycle is of that organization, um, this pipe bill build period right here can potentially be a fairly long period before you get that kind of like first deal to drop. Now, you know, some people will have a bluebird will show up. Um, we'll actually kind of talk about, about why that can actually be really dangerous. Um, you think it's a good thing, it could potentially be a bad thing, um, at least if you take it the wrong way. But the point is, is that like, you know, this is this is at least going to be one deal cycle. But generally speaking, it's going to be multiple deal cycles because, you know, the reality is, is that AEs are probably going to be doing a poor job on some of their earliest um, at bats. So then you've got this situation where you're in partial productivity. Right. So it's after you've closed your first deal, but you're not quite at full productivity. 
yet, right? And so this is another kind of like fraught period as well, where it's like, okay, well, we close the deal. When are the next ones coming? What's going on here, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, we get to full productivity. And so the problem, of course, is that this entire period, depending on like what your deal cycle is, this can be anywhere from like four months to six months to like a year if you're talking about like enterprise sellers, or maybe even longer, right, depending on, on the deal cycle. And so this this whole like the fact that there's this time f offset process here really kind of like messes with organizations or like people's minds. And so it makes it just very, very, very important that you are not doing, and we're going to talk about how organiz some organizations certify on kind of like a rep is being successful and why there are challenges associated with that. So like full productivity certification obviously has problems that we'll talk about, but even first base, first deal based certification is also problematic for reasons that we're going to talk about. So um, Max, anything you want to add to hear about like, you know, when you've talked to organizations that like, you know, particularly scrambles their, their brains and makes it tough for them to, to kind of measure folks here. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, and we'll probably get into this more, but like in general, a lot of folks, I feel like don't have like an idea of like the true like leading indicators that indicate mm -hmm. like a good ramp versus a bad ramp. And so they're kind of just like guessing from the start. So, mm -hmm. yep, for sure. Um, it's that first deal, man. It's all that matters. Uh, <laughs> just, just kidding. Cool. Totally. So let's go ahead. I know, right? So let's go ahead and talk about um, why full productivity certification can be can be problematic right and and this is kind of like a lot of these things actually a lot of stuff in sales these days are kind of like left over from a time before like you could instrument these things um and and so a lot of organiz like many organizations especially like older maybe older school leaders are like used to kind of like putting the reps out in the field and being like all right cool we're going to check in on you in six months and if you haven't gotten there we're going to fire you and we're going to be on our merry way that like maybe worked then <laughs> probably was pretty inefficient back then, but there's a way better ways of doing it now. And so I'm going to kind of show you why, um, you know, I'm going to show you why this approach right here really misses the mark. Um, so in this case, we have some uh, hypothetical uh, AEs here. Um, and uh, we've got Elsa, we've got Anna, and we've got Max here. Different Max, not, no Ouch. relation. No relation. Um, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so what's, what's kind of funny here is you can see like if we're only looking at bookings and you can kind of see these reps at um, kind of full productivity here, if you're only looking at bookings here from a lagging indicator standpoint, um, oftentimes you can get really head faked, right? So like in this case, you can see that this, this rep right here, you know, maybe started a little bit slow. He's, he's starting to close some more deals. And like, this is generally the case is um, it's always the in-between reps that are going to be the ones that are going to be super heartbreaks. Right. Um, and what I mean by that is like, if, if somebody hasn't closed anything in like, you know, month four or month five or whatever, it's like pretty easy to make a call right there. But what you're going to run into generally um, is you're going to run into those ones that are in the middle <laughs> where they're just like, Oh man, it's not going to work out. Oh no. And then like they close a couple more deals, the following one, you're like, okay, you know, they got another month and like, Oh, they like, they ha still haven't gotten up to where they should be, but like they're hanging on, we're hanging on. And of course, as, as sales managers and leaders, you know, ideally we're like, you know, both optimists and pessimists, but we're like really optimistic about like, we're going to get them there. We're going to get them there. And, um, and so this can be really, this can be a recipe for like kind of letting things trail out over time in a way that, um, that just like chews up a lot of salary expense, chews up a lot of attention and chews up a lot of like leads that are going to close lost. And so this is why it's really important um, to be looking at more leading indicators here, um, like in this case, opportunity ownership. So the interesting thing with, um, with our buddy, Max, no relation um, here is, is that his op opportunity ownership doesn't really look like it's problematic, right? He's got enough, um, he's getting enough at bats there, right? But moreover, if we were to go ahead and look at customer facing meeting volume here, it's pretty stark, right? Like, and, and what's, in, what's interesting here is like, okay, here's this success indicator here, right? Boink, right? Like close the deal there, there, close the deal there. But if we're looking at this leading indicator, like customer facing meeting volume and how um, this underperforming rep is just like dramatically off as compared to his peers, like, there's really no reason for us to hold out hope, right? That, that he's going to get there. 
And so like, this is why using like, you know, full productivity um, certification is so dangerous because these outputs can be very lumpy. Whereas the leading indicators are, um, are often far, far, far more, are typically far more granular. And usually there's a lot of signal in, in there. And like, obviously in this example, we're kind of making it pretty obvious, but you'd be shocked, right? Like how, um, and I think, and we, we see this with our customers all the time, um, where like oftentimes they'll go back and look at a recent like busted ramper where like, it's like someone who they like left and they're like, oh man, like, you know, we held on too long. And then you go back and you look at the leading indicators and it's like super, super obvious. And like month two and month three, they're like, <laughs> it should have never gotten to month five, right? Um, Max, any kind of uh, things you wanted to add to uh, to this, you know, like cautionary tale around full productivity certification? Yeah, I mean, I think like this is like a really basic example, but like the cool thing is there's like a bunch of different perspectives that you can look at this stuff too. Like it's not just meetings and ops. And so that's where it becomes like super, super important as an organization to like really align on like the things we care about and the things yeah. that we know lead to a successful ramped AE. And yeah. then you got to just be super, super diligent on like making sure that we're maintaining, you know, whatever the like, you know, standard is for those KPIs and the ramp up, we need to make sure we're monitoring that. Right. That's a great point. Like, you know, customer facing meetings is like, as I like to joke about, it's the the fundamental unit of of selling behavior. But each sales motion will have its own its own wrinkles, um, and and so making sure that those wrinkles are being measured um, is ends up being being really important. And I think we'll talk about that here in a in a second. Um, so then let's talk about the the kind of like the next way that organizations will oftentimes um, try to do uh, ramp certification, and and so the 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 kind of more common version here is like what we call first deal based certification where someone closes their first deal. Great. We're on our merry way. Right. Um, the problem of course with this is that you can have a situation where like deals are lumpy. And so someone could get like a bluebird that just shows up, you know, in the case of max power here, you can imagine like he closes a deal in month two and like doesn't close it one for like a couple more months after that. Right. Um, and so just to kind of give an example here, um, and we've seen, I've seen this quite a bit, actually, especially when you have situations where like reps get um, uh, ops that are transferred to them. But in this case, you have this rep, Jane here, um, she go, she's, you know, closes her first deal there in month three, which is, you know, great, yay. But then the problem is, is that, um, you know, if, if we take our eye off the ball there, what we can see is that like, Yes, she closed, you know, she closed a couple of deals there in month three, but then subsequent to that didn't, was not able to persist that level of execution as compared to those, those peers there. And, and so instead, if we were, again, looking at those leading indicators there, in this case, we're going to use a pretty generic leading indicator that's a very powerful one, uh, which is customer facing meeting volume. And what you can kind of see here is that she comes out of the gate hot, you know, not surprising, um, along with these others, and then kind of like tails off, right? This is kind of like a failure to launch situation where it's like comes into band, right? At least at the beginning, and then kind of like trails off in some sort of capacity, right? Um, and then you can, so um, Max was kind of noting this earlier, um, you can also see this in a more, um, a more sophisticated metric that oftentimes um, our customers will use, which is the, the stage advancements. So essentially, how many opportunities are advancing at least the stage uh, and a more sophisticated version of this that like Max was al alluding to earlier is like looking at specific stages and kind of like how important they are. Like if, if an organization has like a trial motion, oftentimes that'll be tagged as a, as a stage in the, uh, on the opportunity. It's like a pretty prototypical way of, of doing it. Um, you know, making sure that somebody is getting those opportunities um, kind of like the, uh, you know, in the earlier example with Max Power here, like opportunity ownership is all well and good, but what about like, are we getting those to stage two, like out of disc, like in a disco, or are we getting those to like stage three, like proof of uh, proof of value, proof of concept, whatever, whatever it is that your your stages are, um, because then what you can end up seeing is more granularly, like, oh man, that's where this person is falling off, right? Like they're not getting 
their they're not getting their proposal like they're they're getting to disco but they're not getting their proposal or they're entering trials but they're not getting out of trials they're not getting the paper process right they, they're having a hard time controlling those deals there so like you got to measure those from a leading indicator standpoint and ramp um, or else you're going to have a have a bad time there and you can kind of see that here where if in this situation, if this organization kind of like declared victory with Jane here, they would have been sorely disappointed. But if you continue to bird dog those leading indicators, especially the more sophisticated ones, you would have seen in short order that there was no way that she was going to get to the same levels of success as her peers. Um, Max, when, when you think about the kind of like when you all the different customers you work with, what are some of the state like kind of those key inflection points in the sales motion that people should be measuring for their for their rampers, like counting up? Yeah, I mean, it's like you want to be able to like understand like who's converting like first meetings into like pipeline. And then you want to be able to see who's converting like mid funnel deals into like down funnel deals. Those are usually like the two main points. And then off of that, like being able to understand like who's able to actually like like run their pipeline and like a good metric we actually have for this in atrium is follow-up meeting ratio, which is just like right. a really interesting way to think about like, hey, for every first meeting we have, how many follow-up meetings are we actually having with those those people that we're meeting with? And like I would yeah. imagine in this case with Jane, Jane probably is having a really hard time like putting next steps on the calendar and her deals right. are just dying because of it. Yeah, like she's got a leaky, she's got a leaky bucket there, mm -hmm. where um, that's a good point, where she's probably getting a, you know, uh, a certain number of first meetings that are coming in from marketing or self or like prospecting or whatever. But if yep. you don't get those second or third meetings, right, like, mm -hmm. whereas these reps are like putting those second and third meetings on the calendar, along with the incremental first meetings that they're getting. Mm -hmm. that's that's where like essentially the missing meetings are coming from that's a good 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 point there um cool so then like the the way that we actually um see the most successful organizations go about this is what we call uh data-driven ramp management and really what it comes down to shocking is um just making sure that you're doing a really good job of tracking those leading indicators like essentially aligning on a set organizationally, right? Lining on a set of, of metrics that we're gonna track, um, but it's not just aligning on the metrics in question, it's like, it's the amounts, right? So at month two, we expect this, right? At month four, we expect this. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be like an ungodly number of, of metrics. It can be like, you know, it can be like five, you know, anywhere between like three to seven or something like that, right? Where it's like, you know, total opportunity ownership, you know, total pipeline ownership, new opportunity inflow, maybe like a key stage being reached, like the number of ops that are getting to, you know, proof of concept or like maybe trial or something like that. And then maybe the number of ops that are getting to a commercial conversation. So maybe that's like proposal or like scoping or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then maybe just like an activity metric, like customer facing meetings with something like that. And, and like saying, this is what we expect you to be at in month two, in month four, in month six, in that scenario, you're going to have a very tight harness around you know, that rep and all the other reps um, as well. So you're going to be able to see if anyone is like tracking out of there. And so like kind of the examples that we saw earlier in that situation, if you had that like with Max Power here, you might be looking at opportunity owner. Like if you're only looking at opportunity ownership, you might say, oh, everything's hunky dory. But meetings would actually keep you from thinking that right? Or you could actually, you could literally have a situation where their opportunity ownership could be totally fine and their meeting volume could be totally fine, except for the fact that they're not getting any of those ops to stage three, as an example. Well, that, that still wouldn't be fine, right? That still wouldn't be okay. It's like, we have a very busy, we have a very busy rep with lots of opportunities in his pipeline. And it seems like he can't control these deals because nothing is getting to stage four, right? Mm -hmm. And this is why it's important to like, you know, have your arms around around that. So let's go ahead and look at like kind of what that might look like more effectively. So if you're doing this, you know, if you're looking at, if you're doing a better job of holistically tracking the ramp um, organizationally of your, of your, uh, of your new classes, that might look like something like 
hey, cut from a customer facing meeting standpoint, reps are coming into band together, right? And you can kind of see this a little bit like, like oh, maybe they, you know, somebody fell out of band right here. And then oh, 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 we like, we poked them up again, right? We like lifted them back up like, oh man, if we had missed this, like maybe if they're, if we hadn't seen this, right? If we hadn't seen this, maybe that would have continued to deteriorate or whatever, but instead the manager is able to intervene and like lift that rep up and address the question, the problem in question and get them to success, right? And so the same, you know, so looking at customer facing meeting volume there, looking at opportunity ownership, you know, all the reps are coming in the band there, looking at the stages that are being reached, you know, whether it's like just in aggregate or, um, uh, or like a particular set of like key important um, stages there. And then of course, you know, as we like to say, um, if you if you focus on those leading indicators, the, the score will take care of itself, right? And so like those lagging indicators will show up if you have your arms around the, if you're measuring those leading indicators effectively all along the pipeline, right? It can't just be like one part of it. Those lagging indicators will come into, will come into band as, as well, right? Um, and so, you know, folks may be saying like, man, this sounds like a lot of work. Uh, I mean, it is, but, um, you know, it's definitely worth it because it's a really important part of, um, it's a really important part of, of sales management. It's like the most fraught time during a, uh, a rep's career. And, and it's actually just part of like, it's, it's part of your, your daily balanced breakfast of, of being a great sales manager, right? So if you think about what sales, great sales managers should be doing, it's a number of things like deal inspection and database one-on-ones and tracking progress th- towards goals, but it really is monitoring that new hire ramp is a, is a super critical part of what your manager should be doing. And so as a leader or a, like as a sales operations leader or, or a sales leader, um, you know, just kind of like delegating that and relying on managers to do that themselves or like derive how they should be doing that is probably like not the most effective thing in the world. And so instead having like an organizational approach where when we say, hey, these are the metrics and the levels, these are the metrics we're going to be tracking in ramp. And then the levels that people should be hitting at each point, like at each time period. Um, And then having managers take that harness and then hold the reps accountable, that's a far more effective way of going about that organizationally. Um, and so just, you know, f- for the benefit of folks, like this is something that our customers here at Atrium really use Atrium to kind of help do. Um, you know, one of our beliefs, kind of a religious beliefs is that um, sales management is such a critical um such a critical craft that it deserves its own kind of breed of software to help sales managers use metrics to manage, um, effectively manage their reps, which has, of course, every KPI for their reps um, already pre-baked out of the box, um, proactive goal tracking, both regular goals and also in ramp, uh, early warning and learning, and then also performance issue diagnosis. And so all of this, of course, with Atrium also monitors ramp as well. And the reason why is because, um, you know, it's, it's super critical to have those frontline managers able to use data to improve their team performance. Um, we do this with like hundreds of customers um, of all sizes, but like, you know, we have a bunch of great logos as well. And generally speaking, what we see with organizations is they'll, um, you know, they'll see anywhere between 30 to 70% improvements in the key KPIs that they're managing using, using Atrium, whether that's like, pipe hygiene getting better or, you know, customer facing meeting volume um, or win rates improving, um, you know, AE prospecting, et cetera. So those are kind of the benefits of uh, data-driven management. So um, so then, okay, so let, now let's talk about how you would actually do this, right, organizationally. And I think the important thing here is to just, like I was noting earlier, align on a set of metrics that we're going to use from a leading indicator standpoint to um to track progress towards in ramp so for sdr that might be things like um customer facing email volume call volume um total number of accounts being interacted with but also like unique accounts etc uh and then the outputs of course are you know would be opportunities created etc one thing that can be important there is to look at the uh, efficiency and quality metrics as well in ramp because that oftentimes max was noting this earlier 
around um, follow-up meeting ratio, that can help you understand whether or not somebody's like picking up the sales motion because their conversion rates, in the case of SDR, is like their email response rate would indicate to you like that they that they got it right that people are actually like that people are responding to them or their call connector or their their connect to book rate would would tell you that okay they've got it right they've they, they're at least like their batting average is where it needs to be um and so having a quality metric in there as well can be really helpful um max you got any kind of fan favorites in here that that you uh that your customers like to pay attention to in ramp yeah i mean i think like anything related to meetings so like meetings, down funnel meetings, up funnel meetings, follow up meeting ratio, and then like all of the like conversion stuff that you can do from yeah. stage to stage, like all of those can be like great early warning detectors of potential problems that could really bite you later on. Yeah, like uh, conversion out of uh, conversion out of pilot, I can imagine yeah. would, be, would be extremely important if you've got, um, especially if you have like a heavy sales motion with like right. sales, sales engineering or whatever, like you definitely don't want uh, AEs like putting a bunch of, of pilots into the pipe that are never going to go anywhere. Right. Couple that with like the amount of time they're spending in that stage. And then you all oh, yeah. of a sudden can like really clearly see like, wow, this person's spending way too much time in pilot and they're not getting out of it. Like that is a huge, huge red flag. So, right. Yeah. Good, good point there. So like pairing, and I think that's a, yeah, that's a really great point where you could see a conversion rate issue out of that pilot. Right. And then maybe the next question you might ask would be, okay, what's like, what's driving this? Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then like jumping to the next, a next question, like time and stage would help you see, oh man, it's not like it's getting into pilot and like close lossing immediately. Now, maybe that actually might be the case, <laughs> probably less common. Okay. Um, yeah. But like the more common thing would be someone kind of like getting mired in the muck, right. And not moving things along, uh, along quickly. And the, and the same, of course, could be, be the case with like you know other down funnel um stages as well like proposal or what have you like any mm -hmm. essentially like where like where's the hitch where's the hitch in their in their um in their uh where's the hitch in their giddy up right mm -hmm. um cool so so then the next question is okay well how do we systematize um the observation of of ramp and actually now that i realize this i think i messed up earlier and i i skipped over this by the way if you guys if anybody who's like watching right now would love to get would like to get one of these sales nerd hoodies um we're actually giving them away uh we're going to go ahead and drop a link in the chat here for folks to to grab grab one all we ask in exchange is a quick uh chat about how you're using data in your uh to manage your sales organization but i just realized that i totally skipped over that like a goof um Cool. So, so we got these metrics in place, which is great. Um, so now the next question is like, okay, well, how do we make sure that we're like um, systematizing the observation of these metrics? Because if we know the metrics that we're trying to track and like, you know, we, and we've set a, set goals on them, well, like if we're not paying attention to how those are tracking, we're going to have a hard time kind of understanding whether or not people are getting there. And so the kind of the best ways of going about this would be things like, you know, CRM reporting and dashboarding or business intelligence software, both of which are, you know, very flexible, um, but potentially, you know, challenging to set up. And then, um, and then like, we're obviously partial to data-driven sales management software, which is extremely quick to set up um, and not just, you know, maybe a little bit less flexible, getting more flexible, but also importantly, like automatically monitored. Like that ends up being a really key thing is relying on um, managers to kind of like use their eyeballs in order to understand how people are tracking. It Back in the day, it used to be the best way of going about it. Nowadays, we can actually like automatically monitor these things. Um, Cool. So then, um, so then, how do we systematize this? Because it's one thing to have the assets in place for us to um, for us to instrument, uh, excuse me, for us to consume. But then the next thing is we got to make we got to really make sure that we're um, engendering the consumption of these. And so that really kind of comes down to um, the operating rhythm in question, which is usually combined composed of a set of meetings, essentially. Right. So like, you know, your pipeline review, your deal strategy meetings, your one on ones, your QBRs, et cetera. Probably the most important one here is going to be the one on one. Right. So making sure that the sales manager um, 
And this again comes down to as a leader, as like a CRO, VP of sales, or like a sales operations leader who's supporting like the healthy functioning of the organization, making sure that like the agenda of the one-on-one is focused around um, like metrical coaching, because then in that situation, the a rampers version of that one-on-one will literally just be like, all right, let's like look at how we're doing on these ramping metrics here. And then by, by virtue of making sure that that's happening, we're not going to miss things. Right. So if you can imagine in a healthy organization that, um, you know, has data driven one-on-ones that are systematized amongst their, their sales managers, going back to some of these, these examples up here, that's literally where this would be caught. Right. Like, if we're consuming, if we're looking at this right here, like customer facing meeting volume and ramp, and we're looking at this in a one-on-one or in preparation for our one-on-one, we're not going to, we're not going to miss this. We're going to have a conversation about it and we're going to get ahead of it. Right? And the same would be true with, you know, with our, with our buddy Jane here as well. But that's why it's super important to have that woven into the operating rhythm there. Um, and I suppose that can be the case with these other meetings as well. Um, Max, any kind of like uh, kind of favorites here amongst uh, your customers? Not really a favorite, but I think that's something to add is like we talk a lot in sales about like our sales motion. And like, I feel like what doesn't get talked about, which is probably more important, is like our sales management motion. And like, that's literally what this is. Right. Yeah. And I think it's like up to the organization to like align on like what are the key components of our sales management motion and what are the expectations and meetings that our managers should be having? And like, that's really what this is. It's your sales management motion. Yeah. Um, and I think, it, I don't know, like I have empathy for that because um, it's so funny. Like you, it's the joke about how like armies always fight the last war. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so if you think about like managers are like, so like what is the, what is the bad behavior that that AE managers or SDR managers can be engaged in? Well, they'll be like in the deals, mm-hmm. right? It's like, oh, I remember when I was in AE. This is what I'm supposed to do. And then, moreover, second level managers, it's like a VP of sales or a CRO or whatever. Well, like they could potentially be fighting the last war as well. Where it's like, oh, well, what I I got good at when I was a first level manager was I got really good at like managing reps and their personalities and so on and so forth. Whereas as a second level leader, what you need to be doing is systematizing things for the managers right managing the managers like are you running your one-on-ones effectively are you running your pipe reviews effectively are you consuming it's actually funny we hear this from um we hear this from some of our larger customers where the vp of RevOps or the cro is like hey like this is great that atrium can help my managers um you know measure and manage and improve performance of these reps how do I measure the managers <laughs> to make sure that they're effectively doing that? Um, and um, like, the, the, like who's, who's doing a good job of like actually consuming these metrical assets and having, co- and like doing coaching actions. Um, and so I think that's a really important thing to think about like, as a, as a revenue operations leader or as a sales leader is like, you're the architect of the sales management motion uh, and you're making sure that you're, three managers, eight managers, 10 managers, 20 managers, or whatever are managing in a consistent fashion that is not like full of defects, like artisanal, (laughs) right? Just like making it up as they go along. Um, So I think that's a, that's a great, great call out there, Max. Um, And so then the last part here is if we're doing a good job of, you know, systematizing our, our observation using those assets, well, then the next thing we need to do is like help help our managers get better at um, get good at like reading data. And so what that means is um, because like that's how you're going to catch things. Right. It's not not just kind of like, all right, cool. Like, I mean, I open it and then I close it again. It's like, OK, how do I get good at reading this so I can catch that issue ahead of time? And so what that you know, what that kind of looks like is one, you got to detect an issue. Right. Like detect the potential issue, diagnose it like we were kind of talking about earlier in Max's example of, oh, I see a conversion rate problem out of what was the stage that we said out of pilot. Right. We got a conversion rate issue out of pilot. We're detecting that issue. OK, well, where's that coming from? So then the next question might be, oh, well, like, is it because the time and stage is really problematic? Let's go ahead and like flip over to that that metric. Oh, sure enough. 
yep, looks like things are getting stuck there, right? And of course, like if things are if time kills all deals, things are getting stuck there. Guess what? It's not going to go anywhere. Great. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to communicate that to the rep and like talk about how we're going to fix that, right? Like this is where the actual changing behavior happens. And this is why what we talk about at Atrium is that what you want is like managers to get to coaching insights faster so they can change rep behavior. Cause um, gosh, who is it? Oh, it's uh, CRO at uh, sales loft. Steve Goldberg um, has this, has this great phrase, like let's not admire a problem. <laughs> right. Like let's fix it. Right. Um, and um, yeah. So, and so like what we got to do is like, this is what we need to have our managers doing is detecting, diagnosing, and then communicating um, for resolution, then looping back to make sure that's happening questions. So, you know, as an example here, if we've got, um, you know, this rep who like, we can catch the fact that they're not getting into band with respect to stage advancements. Okay. What could the potential root causes of that be? Um, and so what you might look at there is you want to go upstream um, in the metrics driver tree and understand, you know, what, what upstream might be causing the problem. So for instance, if we're, la if we're tracking poorly with respect to bookings, is that because we don't have enough wins or is that because our ASP isn't where we need to be? If it's not enough wins, where's that coming from? Oh, is it coming from, you know, insufficient win rate or is it come from, coming from insufficient attempts? Right. And so by, by kind of going through this, we can debug exactly where the, the hitch and the giddy up might be like, oh, your win rate is problematic because your conversion rate out of pilot is really problematic. Or actually your win rate's kind of fine. You just don't have enough at bats because I don't know, like you're an AE who never was an SDR and no one ever taught you how to prospect. Right. So you're missing all your self prospected. Um, you're missing all your self prospected opportunities as an example. Right. And we actually have these um, these little driver trees as uh, laminates here. So maybe we can um, drop a link in the chat potentially in order to um, let folks sign up for those if they'd like. We like to we send them out to folks. We just paper the world with them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and so the like I think the thing that I would love to leave folks with, uh, especially like the leaders out there, like sales operations, sales leaders, and and what have you, is that the key to scaling up the, you know, the, the revenue success of your organization is really all about onboarding cohorts of reps and getting them to success in a short amount of time. And so the mechanism by which you're going to do that is by making sure that you're doing a good job of data-driven ramp management to make sure that the reps are you know, you're getting them trained up, but then also that they're getting into band and they're getting into band quickly. And if they're not getting into band, where was the example we had earlier? Like if they're having a couple like hiccups there, right? We got to catch that early and then intervene. Like that's the, the kind of the crux, the crux of this. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is making sure that we're instrumenting those, those leading indicators there. Um, and not just like one, but like, you know, a handful um, to make sure that their, you know, reps are getting to where they need to be with respect to this. Um, Max, any kind of like additions that you'd like to make to this before we wrap? No, man, this was fun, though. Yes, totally. Um, well, so folks, um, like I noted earlier, uh, if you'd like to get uh, one of your own handy dandy Atrium sales nerd hoodies here, we're going to go ahead and drop a link to that in the uh, in the chat. So go ahead and sign up for that. Um, all again, as all we ask is in exchange is a, uh, a quick chat with one of our team about how you're doing data driven sales management right now. But um, but otherwise, thank you very much. Oh, hey, Elliot. Hi there. Hello. Hi, thanks, guys. Um, gonna wrap things up now. Of course, big shout out to everyone for attending. Always love having you guys here. Big thank you to our sponsor of today's event, Atrium. Make sure to check them out. Drop the link to their website in the chat alongside the goodies. Big thank you to Pete and Max for the great insights. Uh, recordings and key takeaways are gonna be available on our page shortly. Don't forget to check out our upcoming events and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye. Later.